Hi everyone, I'm back with another video after having my first week off since starting this YouTube channel back in March. As some of you may know from my recent community post, my wife gave birth to our second daughter recently. So as you can imagine, I've been pretty preoccupied with that for the last week or so. Thank you very much for all your kind messages. Thankfully, everybody is doing really well. Apart from the sleepless nights, which you come to expect from having a newborn. So apologies if I look a bit tired in this video. Anyway, this week I'm back. And now that I've had my EV for a full calendar month, I wanted to do a video to show in my experience whether I was saving any money driving an EV or not. I'll also be looking at alternative ways I could charge my EV as well, including public charging, different EV specific tariffs, and the power generated from my solar panels, and what effect it has on cost. So let's dive into the figures and take a look. Stay tuned. So for the purposes of this video, I'll be taking my July running costs for the EV and I'll be comparing figures from my old BMW 3 Series Tourer to my new Tesla Model 3 performance. And I think that's a pretty fair comparison as the cars are in a similar class, a similar size. Although overall, in my opinion, the Model 3 is much better to drive and obviously much faster as well. I think the two cars make a fair comparison and at least show my real world data to show the difference. I'll only be taking into account the diesel fuel costs versus the electricity that I've spent power in my EV. And of course there are other factors in this and this is just a snippet in time and any changes to fuel or electricity costs could really swing these figures one way or the other. There are other factors to consider as well if you're looking to purchase an EV such as cheaper servicing costs, uh, there'll be different insurance costs as well. Maybe a topic for another video. If we take a look at some of the basic stats, obviously we're comparing the 2014 BMW 3 Series Tourer with the 2019 Tesla Model 3. One's diesel, one's electric. The acceleration not 62 was 7.7 .7 seconds for the BMW and is 3.4 seconds for the Tesla Model 3. Uh, we look at brake horsepower, we've got 181 for the BMW and 449 for the Tesla Model 3. Although when you look at this figure online, it does vary due to some of the upgrades that Tesla have provided. The engine size in the BMW is a two litre engine versus a 75 kilowatt hour battery in the Tesla. And the estimated range of the Tesla is 329 miles, although I've never had anywhere near that since I've had the car. And around about 250, 260 seems to be a more realistic figure. Please let me know in the comments what car you drive and how much it costs you to charge if you have an electric vehicle and also what tariff you're on as well, that'd be useful to know. And also let me know what you think of my summary of my costs in this video as well. So if we start by looking at the running costs for the BMW, I very regularly used to fill the car up twice a month pretty religiously, filling up with around 55 litres to the tank on average. I've got the figures on screen from when I've filled up in the past and the cost. So across a month that equates to around 900 miles of range on average and 110 litres of diesel each month. If we take the average price of fuel across the month of July in my area, using my local Shell garage where I used to frequently fill up, this costs uh, 145.9 pence per litre. So the figures that we look at for the BMW equate to an average MPG of around 37 miles per gallon, which ties in quite closely with the expected MPG based on stats from the Fuley and Honest John websites of real world range at 36.65 MPG and 33.1 respectively on average. So if we multiply the £1.46 diesel cost by the 110 litres, per month on average, then that equates to 160 pounds and 49 pence per month, or 1,925 pounds and 88 pence for the year. And when you see that figure written down, it makes me realize how much of a significant cost fuel is for outgoing expenses, just to drive to work and back every day and for some weekend drives out as well. If we look at the Tesla Model 3 costs, now I'm in a lucky position where I'm able to charge at home all the time, and I recently had a Zappy fitted to charge my EV as well. This was fitted by Stephen and his team from Green Revolution. And him and the team did a great job of installing what was a tricky cable run right up one side of the house, straight across the loft and right down the other side of the house from the electric box into the garage, bringing it across the garage and then positioning it in between the two double garages that I've got. The guys did a really neat install and I've included their details in the description for this video. So if you need anything EV charger related or solar panel related, be sure to give them a shout. Once I bought the Tesla and needed the charger within a couple of days, they were quickly on hand to get that installed for me. So I wasn't having to rely on the public charging network or charging at work. So for this comparison, I charged at home all month throughout July. 
and we'll therefore be using these figures to compare the costs. As some of you might know from my previous videos, I'm currently on Octopus Flux, which gives me a cheaper time period between 2 and 5 a.m. of 17.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So not the cheapest tariff available, but not too bad. You can find out more about Octopus Flux linked in this video here, if you're interested. So if we look at the figures, I charged up the car with 353.4 kilowatt hours of electricity throughout July to do roughly the same 900 miles for the month, possibly a bit more. Now that 353.4 kilowatt hours is more than double what I use for my house consumption for the month of July. So you can see the effect that an EV has on a home's electricity usage. Now the vast majority of this usage was between 2 till 5 a.m. So as I said earlier, that cost me 17.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So the total cost to power the Tesla for the month was a grand total of £61.85. So a saving of £98.64 for the month and a lovely annual saving of £1,183 for the year. So a really big difference and that's not even on the cheapest EV tariff which I'll discuss shortly. Now obviously it's important that we take the zappy costs into account as well here. If I'd stuck with the BMW and hadn't bought the Tesla, I wouldn't have needed the Zappi, so I think it's important to include this in the calculations as well. So the install cost was £1,300 to get the Zappi installed. So if we look at the EV savings in terms of payback on the Zappi, we're looking at around 1.1 years before the Zappi pays for itself. But personally, I see the Zappi as something that I would have needed anyway at some point in the future. And when my wife upgrades to an EV, she will make use of that as well. So although it's a factor, I think it's important to recognise the EV savings independently as well. But what if I charged off just solar alone? Another option I have here is to charge the Tesla purely from the solar power that my panels generate. As some of you might know, I have a 6.32 kilowatt peak system installed, along with a 9.5 kilowatt hour give energy battery. And for the month of July, I exported 515 kilowatt hours back to the grid, which assuming I could time the charges when I had an excess of solar, would have more than covered the 353 kilowatt hours I needed to power the car. And this would have essentially made powering the Tesla free for the month and given me the full saving of £160 versus a BMW. So why didn't I do this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm currently on the Octopus Flux tariff, where I actually get paid more to export the energy during the day and during peak hours between 4 and 7 p.m. than I do to import electricity between the hours of 2 and 5 a.m. when the grid is generally using cleaner electricity during the night. So it actually makes more sense for me to fill the EV up during these hours of 2 till 5 a.m. and then export the power that my solar panels create during the day to make a greater return and to help the grid out when it needs the energy most during those peak hours of 4 till 7 p.m. If we look closer at the figures, as of the 1st of July, I get charged 17.57 pence per kilowatt hour to import electricity between the hours of 2 till 5 a.m., essentially to charge my EV and I then get paid 18.29 pence per kilowatt hour to export that electricity that my solar panels generate during the daylight hours of 5 a.m. till 4 p.m. and then th I get paid 30 pence per kilowatt hour for export between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. when the grid needs the energy the most. So in summary, it makes no sense currently for me to use this solar power to charge my car and makes much more sense financially to import it from the grid between 2 and 5 a.m. The only reason you might want to do this is if you wanted to keep your overall bills low and forfeit that export gain. For me though personally I want to do what is best financially overall and also it's an opportunity to help the grid out where I can as well. The other factor to consider here is as the year moves on obviously the solar generation drops off and by around about October time I would have nowhere near enough to power both the house and the car from the solar panels. So I'd still be reliant on the grid for at least some of the power, if not most of the charge throughout the month. If you would like to know any more about some of the Octopus Smart tariffs that they offer, please take a look at my other videos and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more similar content. And if you would like to move to Octopus Energy for your gas and electricity supply, it would be great if you could consider using my referral link that's on screen now if you find my videos useful. If you use this link, you will get £50 when you sign up and I also get £50 as well. So what if I move to a specific EV tariff? Another option I could use is to switch to an EV specific tariff. Octopus offer a few of these, such as Octopus Go, which charges 9.5 pence per kilowatt hour for four hours during the night. And also Octopus Intelligent, which offers a minimum of six hours cheap electricity during the night at a rate of 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So much cheaper than Octopus Flux. Octopus Intelligent also charges the car, 
when the grid utilization is at its lowest, so it's better for the grid overall as well, hence the intelligent part. And bear in mind these figures are correct as of August 2023, but could change at any point in time as well. If we plug these figures in, the monthly costs for Go would be just £33.57 to charge a Tesla for the month, and £26.50 on Intelligent Octopus. So savings over the BMW of £126.92 on Go and £133.99 on Intelligent. So that equates to a whopping £1,607 saving versus a BMW for the year. Again though, right now financially it makes more sense for me to stay on flux and make the most of that export during the day. So as it stands now, I think my plan would be to switch to Octopus Go or Intelligent Octopus around about October time when the solar generation starts to drop off. But I'll continue to monitor it and keep you updated on these videos. So what about public charging or charging at work? I mentioned in one of my previous videos that the place where I work has recently installed a number of EV chargers. If I didn't have off-street parking or a home charger installed, I think this would be my next best option. The charges at work are 37 pence per kilowatt hour, which assuming I charged there for the month would have cost me 130 pounds and 76 pence for the month. So still a small saving of around 30 pound over running the BMW. If we look at public charging, costs start to vary and it's difficult to put an exact figure on it, as it also depends on the charge speed offers it offered as well. EV payment specialist Mina estimates the average cost to charge in July 2023 was around 73 pence per kilowatt hour for rapid charges. So that's almost 10 times the price of intelligent octopus tariff if you were home charging, but also the most expensive method of charging as well. Although any customer would likely be sensible in the same way you would shop around for the cheapest petrol and diesel, if we take this figure as the worst case, this estimates a monthly cost to power my Tesla of a whopping £257.98 throughout July. This is a crazy amount and is pretty much £100 more than it would have cost me to fuel my dirty diesel BMW for the month. And I think it shows that public charging still has quite a way to go. And although it's getting better very, very quickly in terms of reliability, availability and charging speeds, it needs to remain competitive with petrol and diesel for those that can't charge at home. It's estimated that around 60% of people have driveways and could charge at home. However, that still leaves a large proportion of people that are unable to charge at home and would need to find alternative means. So I've included all the stats I've discussed on the screen now and in summary, I would round it up as saying, as always, it's important that you really understand your own electricity usage to ensure that you're on the right tariff if home charging. Home charging is still by far the cheapest way to power an EV and looks likely to remain that way for the foreseeable. Having solar panels and a home battery only adds to that flexibility that they can provide if you wanted to charge your car from the sun, which I still think is amazing that you can do. On a low solar power, wouldn't power the car all year round. It would certainly make a big dent in the electricity costs when owning an EV. If you are public charging, you need to plan your charges a little bit more carefully in the same way you might shop around for cheaper petrol and diesel to ensure that you get the best price for your EV needs. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I certainly did when looking at the figures for this video. I will keep providing the EV cost comparisons in my monthly stats videos as well that you can find on my channel. If you want to see that, please consider liking this video and also subscribing to my channel to help it to reach a wider audience if you found this video useful. Also, if you'd like to join Octoplus, please consider using my referral link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.